Okay, so before I get on with the RL circuits in the multiple choice questions, I thought it would be best to show you this example, this table. If you can understand what's happening in this example, you're going to be a professional with RL circuits. I totally didn't get forced to do this by one of my students. So let's see if we can figure out what's happening here. There's a couple of ways to tackle it. I can do it immediately after for everything, or I can do it a long time after. Um, I'm probably just going to alternate. We'll see. This is 18 volts. I'm just going to write it out here because I can see a parallel circuit. So I have 6 ohms over here and 6 ohms over here. I know that resistors in parallel to figure out the total resistance. It's the formula that is 1 over R plus 1 over R. I can use the little bracket as a trick to get the final resistance. But they're both equal. If they're both equal, the total resistance will become half. If there's 2, you just obviously divide by 2. So I have 6 divided by 2, which will give me 3, uh, three ohms. And we'll get to that. The L here, the inductor, is 5 Henry's. That will be important at some point. Let's see what happens now. Immediately after the switch is closed. So if you go back to the video of inductance, you'll understand what an inductor does. Um, it blocks the current. Actually, it blocks the change in current. So if it's closed, of course, well, first of all, if it's open, there's no current. Once I close it, current will begin to flow. It's going to be coming out of this, which means, what is this going to do? It's going to block it. Current is going to try to come this way, but the inductor is going to block that current from coming. This whole path will be blocked, which means the current, when it reaches this junction, it cannot go this way. It must go this way. It has only one path it can follow. It must pass this way. I have one loop of current flowing. So to find the current out of the battery, of course, the total current will be the voltage of the battery and divided by the total resistance in the circuit. And this circuit that's currently working right now, it is 18 volts divided by only the 6 ohms. Current is being blocked over here, so I will not include that 6 ohms. Nothing is happening, only here. 18 over 6, using my amazing mental math skills, 6, 12, 8, 3 amps. I am really good with mental maths, as you can see. Next, I have 3 amps. Oh, by the way, I've got my calculator, just in case, right here, because in the last video I forgot it. I didn't use a calculator, I promise. Okay, where am I? Next, long time after the switch is closed. A long time after means that the inductor slowly, slowly stops blocking the current. It eventually gives up and says, okay, fine, you can pass through. The current will pass through a long time after. And you will know that from the, the graph. If I have the voltage graph, the current graph, it'll decrease over time and eventually it becomes zero. This stops pushing back. It just acts like a normal wire, a normal boring wire. So you can kind of ignore the symbol a long time after. Usually it means after infinite time or more than five time constants, both of which means it will be full over here. That will be important as well for RL circuits. There's a way to find the time constants. We'll talk about that later. Okay, long time after, infinite time, done. I equals V from the battery over the R total in the circuit. Being a parallel circuit, I need to find the parallel resistance, 1 over R. Being parallel, I know that the voltage is equal across each branch. If this becomes a normal wire, all the voltage will go to here. So I'll have 18 volts here and 18 volts here. Let's see what happens now. I equals 18 divided by... 1 over 1 over, or just 6 divided by 2. That will give me, check yourself, 3 ohms. I will write it here, 3 ohms. Now, of course, 18 divided by 3 is 6 amps. See how I didn't hesitate? It's because I am so good with mental maths. Okay, I have now got the current a long time after the switch is closed from the battery. Okay, then let's go back to immediately after now. The current through R1. This is R1 over here. And remember, immediately after, it was being blocked, wasn't it? So the current through R1 would actually just be zero. Zero amps, I can write that if I like. The current through R1 a long time after. A long time after means this becomes a normal wire. Yes, we have current flowing through here. And the only resistance in the path is this resistor. So. I equals V over R. 
being parallel, I've said it a million times already, the voltage is equal, 18 volts divided by specifically this R. I know this has 18 volts. I know the resistance of this. That becomes 18 over 6. That tells me 3 amps after a long time. And I'll show you how we can check our answers in a minute. If you're struggling with the series and parallel circuits, I suggest going back to my Term 2 video, and you can watch series and parallel circuits to make you better with that idea and understanding. It will, of course, be useful for your exam. Current through R2 immediately after. Well, we did already do this. That was blocked. The current only flowed in this path. Only flowing in this path means the current coming from the battery must come through here. There's no other choice. That path was blocked over here. So if I had three amps coming out over here initially, like we did, I must have three amps over here. So I will get three amps. If you really wanted to calculate it, of course you could. You can do 18 divided by 6, which is 3. 18 divided by 6, 3. So I could get that. Next, a long time after the switch is closed. A long time the current through R2. Well, R2 doesn't care whether it's immediately or a long time after. There is no inductor blocking its path. That is to do with this. R1 is having the problems, thanks to him. R2 is relaxed. So before and after, same thing. It's going to stay at 3 amps, and you can verify by doing V over R, no need, but you can verify 18 over 6 again, uh, same thing, because parallel voltage is equal, remember, this is 18, this is 18, and so on. And you'll get 3 amps, very good. Okay, let's have a quick look and make sure our answers make sense. At the beginning, immediately after, we have the current only flowing in this one path, the battery total current in the path was 3 amps, 0. And in R2, 3. 3 plus 0 equals 3. That looks good. That's the rule for current in parallel. Remember, the current in each branch adds up to the total current. So let's verify a long time after. We calculated 3 amps here, and I calculated 3 amps here. 3 plus 3 should equal to 6 amps from the total. Look down here. 3 plus 3 equals 6 amps, the total current. The current from the battery was at 6 a long time after. And I calculated 18 over 6, 18 over 6, 3 and 3, 3 plus 3 equals 6. Right? Right. Next, potential difference across R1 immediately after. Remember this little graph over here? This graph is for the inductor. If this has full voltage at the beginning, that means there is no voltage here. We also know that because there is no current over here. 18 over 0 would just give me 0. There is no voltage in R1. Not at all. A long time after, the inductor's voltage will decrease and it will become 0, which means the resistance voltage will be the opposite, right? So after a long time, all 18 volts will be across R1. So this will become 18 volts. I hope you're following this. Next, the voltage across R2. Well, R2 doesn't have anything that it depends on. The voltage of 18 volts in this branch will be 18 volts. At the end, it will be 18 volts. It does not care. It is taking all of the voltage and enjoying itself. Very nice. The voltage across L. The voltage across L at the beginning from the graph. You remember this. It's full. This has the full 18 volts initially blocking the current. 18 volts. A long time after, 0 volts, because a long time after, nothing happens. So basically the opposite of the resistor in the same path, which makes sense. If this takes less, 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 less volts, this will take more, more, more volts. If this takes 0, this will take it all, and vice versa. Now, the rate of change of current across R1. So that is, so one thing to know before we move on, rate of anything the rate of current means current over time. If I said the rate of energy, that would be energy over time, which is power. The rate of anything, like distance or whatever, the idea is the same. If you see the word rate, it means divide by time. Okay, so that's, an idea. that's how fast something happens. That's the actual definition of the word, how fast something happens. So they're just being fancy over here. The formula you know for the inductor, the formula that you know for inductors E, equals negative L I over T. Now, what did I just say? I said the current over time, the rate of current. It's asking you for the change of current over time. 
That's what it's asking you for, not the current, the current over time. So to get that, I'll just rearrange this. I'll just take my E and I'll divide that by L. And I will get my negative, it's not important, I over T, I over T. The reason it's negative, as I mentioned before uh, in previous videos, it's going in the opposite direction. That's why there's a minus here. I need this. So at the beginning, yes, the current is changing because the voltage is decreasing. The current is changing. So I can find the change in the current. The EMF was 18 and the L, if you've forgotten, I wrote it here, L was 5 Henry's. 18 over 5, now I'm testing my mental maths. I believe that's 3.6 uh, amps per second. I hope that's right. Um, so 3.6 amps per second is the rate of change. I should probably verify that. I'll look like an idiot on YouTube forever. Uh, yes, I was correct. See, I'm awesome. Now, the rate of change of current after a long time. Well, what happens after a long time? The current becomes steady. The current is no longer changing. There is no rate of current change. The current isn't changing. It is zero. No change. Don't need to write anything. Just zero. You can write amps per second if you like. No change. Steady current. Now, once we've figured this out, we can head back to the other practice questions. I'll do that in my next video. Thank you.